Blessed friends, welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle and Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Well, today is February the 26th of the year 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, our text this morning is going to be taken out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. You know, many people, especially those who are early in their journey and their experience with God, often ask the question, What is the will of God for my life, especially? But what is the will of God? Well, the Bible tells us here very clearly, the will of God is your sanctification. Now, as we've discussed many times in the past, sanctification simply means separation from this world. So let's back up and let's uh, start at chapter four, verse one, and let's kind of look at this in its context. It says, so furthermore, we beseech you, brothers and sisters, and we exhort you, we encourage you by the Lord Jesus that as you've received of us how you ought to walk and please God, so you would abound more and more. For we know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. And this is the will of God, even your sanctification, what? That you should abstain from fornication. Now, I would submit to you that this word fornication here in the Strong's Concordance talks about adultery, harlotry, even incest. But in the context of this passage, this is spiritual fornication. So let's back up and look at it again. This is the will of God, even your sanctification, your separation from this world, that you would abstain from committing spiritual adultery. Well, how do we commit spiritual adultery? We're bound to the Father, and therefore we are committed to him. And when we adulterate ourselves by flirting with this world and the things that this world has to offer from A to Z, we commit spiritual adultery. We commit spiritual fornication. We are being enticed and seduced by the things of this world. And that, my friends, is forbidden. Look what it says again. This is the will of God, even your sanctification, your separation from the world that you would abstain from fornication, spiritual fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel, his body in sanctification, in separation from this world and unto honor, not in the lust of conspicuance, which simply means things that are forbidden, even as the Gentiles do who know not God. So the Gentiles give themselves to the things of this world. The Gentiles chase after the things of this world. The Gentiles, the pagans, are seduced and enticed by the things of this world. The Gentiles, the pagans, participate in the things of this world. But you have been called out, as we talked about yesterday, to touch not the unclean thing. And the unclean thing is simply the thing in this world that is promoted by this world and enjoyed by the people of this world. For look what verse 7 says. God has not called us unto uncleanness, which simply means life without restraint. We are supposed to restrain ourselves in this life from participating in the things that this world has to offer. Now just think of those things, friends. Sometimes you may get aggravated with me because I point those things out. I'm simply doing that to stimulate your mind. But I don't want to leave any stone unturned either. I want you to consider a vacation. Could that be of this world? And how should we take time spent away from our vocation and use it for the glory and the kingdom of God? Well, instead of chasing after the things of this world, a European vacation, for example, why not go to Haiti and help build a home or a school or a place of worship for Christians in Haiti or Africa or Indonesia or other such places? Why does everything have to be about us and bringing us pleasure? That's the thought, friend. God had not called us unto uncleanness, life without restraint, but unto holiness. And as we state at the beginning of every single video, holiness is a lifestyle. It's a set of choices that we make from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep. And it's based upon separating ourselves from the things of this world. How do we do that? 
And are we doing enough? The answer to that, obviously, friend, is no. None of us are doing enough. There's much more that we could cut out of our lives to keep ourselves free from living for ourselves and freeing up more time, more money, more resources to benefit the lives of others. That's what holiness is all about, friend. And may God Almighty give each of us more opportunity to do just that. I pray today, friend, that you will walk close to the Lord's side and that your every thought will be captivated by his presence and that you'll not be swept away with the imaginations or the thoughts of this life, but that you'll constantly bring yourself back to a steadfast place founded upon the Lord, and that would affect your every decision this day for his glory. I love you, friends. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.